Kalashnikov loose in front. And who but Mark Stahl puts the Red Wings ahead 2-1. Another great call by Jack Edwards, but just with the Bruins on the wrong end of that one. Good morning, everybody. Time for Nesson Sports Update. George Belecci here. And we're going straight to the Garden with the Bruins hosting the Red Wings. And Boston knew they'd be without Brad Marsh on Tuesday night as he suspended for three games. But no Bruce Cassidy either as he was placed in league COVID protocol. B's bench leader is vaccinated and GM Don Sweeney would not speculate when Cassidy can return to the team. Still, the B's have four games in nine days ahead of them. For now, the priority with Bruce Cassidy is his health. Joe Sacco, who's been an assistant with the Bruins for eight seasons, leading the bench now. Go to the first period. Bruins attacking with numbers, but Carson Coleman can't connect with Charlie McAvoy. Just to the left of Charlie Mack's stick. Breeze come up empty-handed there. We'll go to the second now, still scoreless. Mortiz Sider for the Red Wings. Rips it, but blocked by Patrice Bergeron. But check out the captain, hobbled after that one, grimacing on the bench. Then a few minutes later, it's Charlie Coyle, loses the puck at his blue line. So Philip Zadina for the Wings, one on two is good as a one nothing lead. Now we'll go to the third period. Gustav Lindstrom cross-checks Bergeron into the boards here. And that's assault, brother. David Pasternak not having any of that for his captain. Gets right in Lindstrom's face. Let's him know he was not a fan. Second penalty now gives the Bruins a five on three power play. And they cash in with Taylor Hall to Pasta. One time finds it back in the net. Pasternak's eighth goal of the season. Tied at one now, 14 minutes to go. But now eight and a half minutes left. Red Wings and the Bruins end on a delayed penalty. Vladislav Namestikov fires it net in the rebound by Mark Stahl there to clean it up. That would make it a 2-1 Detroit lead. The Bruins had their chances. Outshot the Red Wings 42-16, but lose 2-1. Message after the game, just made it too easy on their opponent. Red Wings now ahead of the Bruins by three points in the Atlantic standings. Three straight wins for Detroit, while the Bruins seek their first winning streak since November 13th. Jack and Brick have more from the Garden. The dating app is Tinder. The MLB signing rules are tenders, which Boston exercised on 27 players yesterday. These may be the last roster moves we see for a while because at midnight tonight, the current MLB collective bargaining agreement will end. This will be the fourth lockout in MLB history. And why? Well, the players want to bring an end to their shrinking share of league revenues. Stop tanking and get younger players paid. So yes, it's a money fight, and our own Jemai Webster has more on the pending work stoppage. All right, Monday night, we'll have a showdown of two of the top-scoring defenses in the NFL when the Patriots take on the Bills. And for Devin McCourty, no other place he'd rather be. Hear from the veteran safety after the break. And the postseason finally arrived for the Revs, and it ended before it can truly begin. Highlights from the penalty shootout coming up on Nessie Sports Update. Postseason soccer finally began for the New England Revolution after 23 days off. That's a reward for being the top seed in the East, and that rest was needed because with NYCFC visiting, it took extra time and penalty kicks to decide the winner. Third straight playoff appearance under Bruce Arena for the Revs, who are seeking a second straight conference finals appearance. But fast starting this one, Santiago Rodriguez for NYC gets by goalkeeper of the year, Matt Turner, makes it a 1-0 lead for them. But the Revs support shield winners for a reason. Penalty in the corner sets up Carlos Gill with the cross to Adam Busca with the equalizer. But that would be it in regular time. So to extras, 108th minute, Tati Castellanos, your golden boot winner, but only needs his head on that one. NYCFC, 2-1 lead. But anything you can do, the Revs can do better because Emmanuel Botang with the cross to Dijon Buchanan with the right foot ties things up. So we go to penalty kicks and NYCFC hits all five. The Revs postseason ends before it can really begin. NYC advances 5-3 to three on PKs. So the top three seeds in the West all eliminated by the time the conference finals have rolled around. Now the number one seed in the East is done as well. Greatest regular season in MLS history ends just like that. Revs still seeking their first MLS Cup appearance since 2014, while NYCFC will now face the Philadelphia Union next.
And now to the other team that calls Gillette home. Patriots and Bills on Monday night will be a matchup of the two top scoring defenses in the NFL. Bills letting up just 16 and a half points per game, while the Pats defense is allowing 15.8 points a contest. AFC East lead is on the line as well. So what more can you want in prime time? For Devin McCourty, well, he just simply loves it. We'll all be there. Now the Bills are getting a boost in the trenches. Offensive guard Joe Feliciano returned to practice after battling a calf injury. Meanwhile, offensive tackle Spencer Brown and defensive tackle star Lutalele are back from the reserve COVID-19 list. Jemai Webster has more on the Patriots' surge this season so far. So last Sunday, the Pats ended a two-game losing streak against the Titans. They're hoping to do the same thing Monday night against Buffalo in Buffalo. Bills won both meetings last season. First time that has happened since 1993. They outscored the Pats 62 to 30 in those two wins. The Pats, they don't believe in statement games, but Monday they'll look to reaffirm themselves as the kings of the AFC East. And if the Bees being without Bruce Cassidy and Brad Marchand isn't enough, how about Jake DeBrusque wanting out of Boston? Forward demanding a trade. I'll have more after the break. Jake DeBrusque became a Bruin with the 14th overall pick in the 2015 draft. Since then, he scored 140 points for Boston in 261 games, and now he wants a trade. The winger has seen his ice time decrease the last three seasons and becomes a restricted free agent after this season. So his agent wants to see the 25-year-old get a fresh start. For B's captain Patrice Bergeron, it's still all love, no hate. You know, nothing changes the culture. So possibly no DeBrusque in the near future, no Brad Marchand the next two games, and no Bruce Cassidy, who's quarantining after entering league COVID protocol. Dale, Billy, and Barry break down how Cassidy's absence impacts the Bees moving forward. The Boston. After two straight games at the Garden, Bruins back on the road in Nashville. They'll be facing the Predators on Thursday. The Saturday night, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champs, Lightning are in town. As always, we'll have full coverage from pregame all the way to post right here on Nesson. And with Bruce Cassidy, the biggest name in the NHL to land on the COVID list, LeBron James is the biggest name in sports to do the same. The King has entered the league's health and safety protocol. Now, James is vaccinated, but is expected to miss several games. NBA protocols require players to isolate for 10 days following a confirmed positive COVID-19 test. And more Mac Jones and Tom Brady comparisons. Yeah, more Mac Jones and Tom Brady comparisons. This one from a Hall of Fame Super Bowl winner who's familiar with a successful successor after the break. Brett Favre knows a thing or two about seeing an heir parent thrive. He left the Packers for Minnesota and step Aaron Rodgers. For the Patriots, it's the same with Brady leaving for the Buccaneers and Mac Jones making an instant impact as a rookie starter. For the gunslinger and Favre, he sees the similarities between Mac Jones and the GOAT. Favre saying on Sirius XM Radio about Mac, the way he plays, being ready to play instantly and not making mistakes, really sort of a young carbon copy of Tom Brady. And it's obviously the way premature to say he is the next Tom Brady, but he plays a lot like him. He's an intellectual player, is not going to beat you with his feet, but his mind and his arm and his pocket presence is all those tools. And the team, quite frankly, in all phases, is playing exceptionally well, and we know they're well coached. But a lot can happen between now and the end of the year. Simply put, game, recognize game right there. Now, there's nothing like holiday season as December is a month of giving. And 97 years ago, Boston got one of its greatest gifts. Find out what after the break. December 1st, a legendary date in Boston and American sports history. The Boston Bruins played their first ever NHL game on this date in 1924. Against a city we all love to hate, Montreal, defeating the Maroons 2-1. to one. Bees were the first American team in the NHL with this game. So 97 years and six Stanley Cups later, they're one of its most premier franchises. That's all for Ness's Sports Update for, for the rest of the day. You know, Celtics play tonight, hosting the 76ers, and Mac Jones speaks. So make sure to stay locked on with Nesson for full Boston sports coverage. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.